Welcome to a new lesson, surface areas of right cones. Let us define what is the surface area of a right cone. The surface area of a right cone is equivalent to the lateral face of the cone plus the base area. Now what is the lateral face of the cone? It is the triangular shape you see in green. If you would open up the surface area of this, you would see something like this. That's the lateral face. What about the base area? The base area is actually a circle. So, due to this, the surface area is the addition of pi r s and pi r squared. Pi r squared is the circle, while pi r s is the lateral shape. What's interesting about this is that the S is called the slanted height. of the cone. The relationship between the radius of the circle and slanted height is quite clear. Let's take a look at the cone again. If we connect the apex with the base, it forms a right angle. This means that we have a right angle triangle and the slanted height and the radius are in a right angle situation with the height of this triangle. So this means if we have the height, slant area, we could find radius and vice versa. Let's use this formula in an example. A right cone has a base radius of 2 feet and a height of 7 feet. Calculate the surface area of this cone to the nearest square foot. Let's take, a look. Let's take a look at a picture of this example. So here are the pictures. If you look at the cone, the height is 7 feet. You can remember this is the height. While the radius is 2 feet. And the slanted height forms a right angle triangle. Now a perfect side view without using the circle is also drawn to show you that the 7 feet perfectly bisects or divides by 2 the entire cone and then on the left hand side we have 2 feet radius and on the right hand side we have the same thing. So this is a clearer picture of what Pythagoras uh, workings. And why do we care about the Pythagoras? Because we need to use Pythagoras to find for the slanted height in order to find the surface area. So let's do that. c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So again we're looking for slanted height in this case. c is our slanted height. Well a is 2 squared plus 7 squared. Now it doesn't matter whether uh, b is 7 or a is 7. as long as you're just adding them together. This result is the same. If we get s squared equals 4 plus 49 and we'll just keep on doing the same thing until we find the answer. So 53. Uh, since we're looking for s, not s squared, we have to square root both sides of the equation and we'll get 7.28 now, we, since we found the land height of our cone, we could use it to find the surface area of our cone. As recall from previous picture, from previous slide, SA is pi r s plus pi r squared. Now we just substitute this, the radius, in for two surface area is seven point two eight plus pi two squared and our surface area will be around fifty eight feet squared. 
remember that you still have to find the slant height for this to work, for you to find the surface area of a right column. Let's take a look at one more example. A lateral area of a cone is 220 centimeters squared. The diameter of the cone is 10 centimeters. Determine the height of the cone to the nearest tenth of the centimeter. Let's take a look at the picture. So what is given to us is the diameter of the circle of the base of the cone, which is 10 centimeters. If we divide the 10 by 2, we get 5 centimeters as for our radius. So that brings, it, brings us a little bit closer to being able to find the height of the cone. What we also know is that the lateral area, this isn't a question, is equivalent to 220 centimeters squared. Well, what is the lateral area exactly? The lateral area or I'm just going to call LA, lateral area, is equivalent to a specific formula. It's pi r s. Recall that in this case, it is looking something like this. Sort of like a cone with a semi-little curve circle path at the, bottom, at the top in this case. So we know that lateral area is 220 centimeters squared. We're going to forget about the units right now and we have pi, and we just found out that the radius is half of 10, which is 5. And the only thing that, in this case, we are missing is the slanted height. Why would you actually care to find the slanted height? Well, because of this idea. If we take let's, this triangle right here, the right angle triangle, and we know that one of its one of its lengths is 5 centimeters. If we could find the slanted height using a specific formula such as the one with, uh, with lateral area, then, then we could find, so let's say we found the slanted height right here, then we could use Pythagoras to find the height. So our plan is to find the slanted height using the lateral area equation and then use Pythagoras to find the height having already slant. So this is a two-step process. So let's find the slanted height first. So on the left-hand equation we have 220 and on the right-hand equation we have 5 15.7 S. On your calculators you can find the pi button and press the multiplication by 5. All, or if you don't have the pi button, you could also put 3.14 times 5. And we'll, this will both give you approximate 15.7. I'm going to erase this part because we don't need it. It's just a little review for you. But um, what's the most important part is the realization of how do we solve in this question that 220 equals 15.7 s. What operation exists between 15.7 and s? Well that operation is actually multiplication. The reason why you need to know that this operation is multiplication is that we need to isolate for s and in order to isolate for s we have to do, do the opposite operation such as division to cancel out 15.7. So in order to cancel out the 15.7 and isolate the, the slanted height we have to divide 15.7 by both sides of the equation. And the reason why we do that because 15.7 divided by 15.7 will give you 1 or just s. While on the other hand 220 divided by 15.7 is is 14. So 14 is equivalent to our slanted height exactly to be 14 centimeters. So now we can go back to our picture we can raise the s and we can just put 14. 14 centimeters. Now we have two out of the three pieces for a Pythagoras. I'm just going to erase this little this lateral area. Now we have to find the height. And let's use the Pythagoras formula c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And we have to see where the 14, the 5, and the h fit. 
14 is the longest side and how do we know that it's the longest side in the uh, Pythagoras because it is um, being pointed to, well, actually the 9 degrees is points at it that's what the arrow I drew that, might, that means uh, any facing side that faces the 9 degrees is the longest side that means that is the 14 so we have 14 squared is equivalent to uh, a squared and a squared is 5 it doesn't really matter if a is 5 or b is 5 as long as the height is right here on the other side and I'm just going to draw it green so that it matches the color so we're looking for the height so on the left hand side of this equation we have 14 square inches 196 and 5 times square is 25 plus height squared in order to solve for height squared we have to subtract 196 from 25. And the reason why, because if you take a look, this is invisible, but this is not positive operation because it's not present. It's positive. In order we have to cancel the 25, we have to separate the 25 from the height, and in order to do that, we have to go minus 25 from both sides of the equation. When we do that, we get 171 on one side of the equation, and height squared on the other. Now we have height squared. Again, whenever we have squared, we ha in order to solve for a height, we have to square root. So we square root one side of the equation and then the next. So on the left hand side, we have just height, and that's what we're looking for. That's what we want to get in centimeters. And the square root of 171 is approximately 1, 3.1 centimeters. Um, this is the answer. And why is this is the answer? is uh, you have to look at the equation itself. Determine the height of the cone, so you have to read this part right here, and determine the height of the cone to the nearest tenth. And the height is to the nearest tenth, that means we have to have one decimal point. Your answer has one decimal point in your answer.